Hello, Initiate. Recently, Abstergo Historical Research began several new projects in London. We both know that when Abstergo makes big moves, the Templars are up to something. We think they're hot on the trail of a new piece of Eden. I've got people in London looking for it. Hey, Bishop! Jacob and Evie Fry are twins. How awesome is that? Speak of the devil. Fire up your cameras, Bex. I've got picture. ETA on the payload? Sending it now. A lot to sift through. I'm gonna get the initiates on it ASAP. You look weird with a weapon. Let's plant a little bug and see what we can see. Got something. Isabel Ardant has a meeting here in a few hours. Uh, doesn't say with who. Doesn't say with whom, Rebecca. I suppose it's down to Muggins here to find out. Hold on. The mission was to find data to locate a piece of Eden in London. We did. And now I am eager to try this new kit. I don't like it when those two go off book like this. Well, all we can do is take a deep breath and move forward. You'll be searching for the peace of Eden through the lives of Jacob and Evie Fry, twin assassins who operated in Victorian London. Your first set of genetic memories are downloaded. Good luck. Brother George, it is as I feared. London has fallen. Thrice I have written to you, begging your aid. Thrice you've responded with silence. And yet I write again. So desperate my need, so few my options. I need you. London needs you. You would say it is too great of a task, or that it is not yet time to strike. Patience, you would counsel. But whilst you wait, the Templars consolidate their power. They have chosen a Grand Master so ruthless, so thorough, one might think Reginald Birch himself had returned. His name is Crawford Starrick, and he intends to rule the world. There is no aspect of society he does not control, no industry that escapes his grim touch. By day, it is corrupt merchants and venal politicians who hold court. Come night, a vicious street gang known as the Blighters strikes terror in the hearts of all. There is no business untainted by his poison. No person unexploited, be it by duplicity or force. Our enemy has designs on the highest office of them all. And so, as you look inward, and dare I say it, afraid, Crawford Starrick's ambition is fixed on the beyond, to kingdoms and continents as yet unconquered, though not for long, for he knows. As I have warned you, time and time again, whosoever controls London, controls the world. The iron ships from here. The Templar running things is Rupert Ferris and our target one. Target two is Sir David Brewster who's got his hands on a bauble that could ruin us in this wretched war. Think you both can handle it? What a question. All right. My mistake. Ladies and gentlemen, the unstoppable Fry twins. See them nightly at Covent Garden. George, honestly, I've studied the plans of the laboratory and have every route covered. And I've got all I need right here. I'll extend your regards to Ferris. Chat later, George. We have a train to catch. Jacob! Evie! May the green guide you, you vagrants! Poor man. More afraid than ever. Years have not been kind. Evie Fry, where do you get it from? The same place as you, Jacob. Die. 
How long does the Intenter go on like this? It's disrupting the other workers. Jack is and get the machine fixed. And send me some laudanum for my head. Coming right up. Mr. Ferris, sir. The, uh, the lad in the factory should be taken to be bandaged by the apothecary. Fine. But dock his wages. Yes, sir. It is done. Oh? What did you accomplish, boy? A bolt loosened in Starrick's machine. A large bolt. But not enough. Your Grandmaster will fall. You assassins can circle London to your heart's content. The mechanism we have built has been going strong for a hundred years, and will run a thousand more. It is the very city itself. We will take London from your hands. From Croydon? You lurk in the shadows like a coward. I doubt it. We seem to have made an unscheduled stop. Maybe next time I'll walk. Yard. Guard quarters. Bruce's laboratory. This is where the piece of Eden will be located. sense. Now, did a couple of locomotive and create a diversion. Well, where is it? Huh? Where's Brewster's supplies? Meter. down the tracks you stay here and keep a look at all right i'll shout if i get any bother i need two more weeks with the device your questionable practices are beginning to draw unwanted attention you've been given more than enough time to achieve results sir david i was unaware that you expected me to perform like a cocker spaniel permit me to remind you of your obligation to the order miss thorne you ride me like a racehorse. Sir David, I will return tomorrow. If you have not unlocked the device's secrets, forget your dogs and horses. I will leave you to the wolves. Good day. I was merely promised a tour of the premises, my lords. Who sent you? It's one of green spies. Get that man to interrogation. Then I want him brought to the lab. What a pity, but no deviations from the mission. Ah, thank you kindly. I was in ever such a squeaky fix when, what do you know? You rescue me. Where's the hidden laboratory? 
Untie me, and then we can parlay, milady. I'm pressed for time. Tell me now. It's underground. Requires a key. One of the guards nicked mine, cheeky sod. Thank you. Uh, now, untie me? You got yourself in? I trust you can get yourself out again. Not to worry, milady. Can still recall a couple of tricks from me carnival days. Charming. Piece of Eden. Increase the electricity. But it'll become unstable, sir. You heard what Miss Thorne said. We need results now. What was that explosion? What explosion? EV. Piece of Eden detonated and took the lab with it. The magic lump of hyperbolic metal. I'm shocked. Simply because you have never valued the pieces does not All mean... went according to plan, hmm? <clears throat> there was a slight complication. How slight? The lab exploded. Jacob. You derailed a train. Oh, he did. Did he? Well, the train derailed and I happened to be on it. I killed my target. Brewster is also no more. Then all in all, a successful mission in spite of you two. What about London? What about it? We're wasting our time out here. You know as well as I do that London has been the domain of the Templars for the last hundred years. They are far too strong yet. Patience. The Templars have found a new piece of Eden. Sir David is dead. They do not know how to use it. The Council shall guide us. Sound advice that your father would have seconded. I shall see you back in Crawley. Patience, Evie. Oh, the gentle sound of opportunity passing us by. So what's stopping us? London is waiting to be liberated. Forget Crawley. Father would have wanted us to listen. Oh, Father. You could continue his legacy in London. Freeing future generations from a city ruled by Templars. You know, Jacob Fry, you might just be right. Then shall we? Yes. Let's. Onward to London. <laughs> Sean and Rebecca. I still think attacking a Templar is a mistake. Call Dr. Grammatica. Come on. Oh, Isabel, what a lovely surprise. Our mutual friends will be here shortly to search for the artifact. Once it's located, I'll let you know. Super. Always a pleasure. Prick. It's people like you that give historians a bad name. I'm afraid I don't have time for you today, Mr. Hastings. Thank you for making my job easy. Oh, shit. It does look grim. Masterberg, Agent Acosta. Deal with them, please. Move it! Hunt them down! I've never seen so many people all at once. Churning seas of London. 
It's just the way Father described. Now, to find Henry Green and formulate a plan of attack against the Templars. Is Mr. Green again? The assassin watching over London? Did you not listen the first three times? Listen to what? <laughs> Where is Mr. Green's shop located? It was marked on Father's map. Two assassins. Equal in height, one female, one male. Two decades old, and those devilish smiles. You must be the Fry Twins. And you are? Henry Green, at your service. I was sorry to learn about your father's passing. Thank you. What can you tell us about Crawford Starrick? I suppose the Council desires news. London must be freed to provide a better future for all of its citizens. Well, thank goodness the Council saw reason and sent you to aid us. Yes. Thank goodness. Unfortunately, I am the bearer of bad news. Today, Starrick sits at the helm of the most sophisticated Templar infrastructure known in the Western world. Every class, every borough, the gangs, the industries. His reach extends all across London. I've always thought of myself as a gang leader. Firm, but fair. Huh. Well, I have uniforms. And I'll unite a mix of disenfranchised outsiders under one name. That's it, Evie. We can rally them to our side. Oh, like the way that you rallied those car players at the Oakwood Tavern into the river. Oh, that was different. They beat me at whist. I can see it now. We'll call ourselves the Rooks. You were never good at chess either. Have you got a better plan? Find the piece of Eden. Oh, well, let me show you the lay of the land. Shall we? Look at what Starrick has done to the city. Whitechapel is riddled with crime. Child labor, despite regulations. A gang known as the Blighters overruns the streets. And Templars manipulating behind the scenes. As in all the other boroughs, we need to return this city to the people who built it in the first place. We will free London from Starrick. You have my word. And my looks. Miss Fry. Your passion is inspiring. Come. Let us return to my shop, and I can bring you up to date on the rest. Confound this city! No one looks where they're going! Yes, I've noticed that. Bloody drood! I'll never finish it at this rate. Only Providence knows where those words are headed now. Well, I must get to work replacing them. Should you ever be in the mood for a tale or two, you can always find me where the ale is warm and tempers are hot. Ta-ta! What an odd man. That Mr. Fry was Charles Dickens. Knows everyone and everything in the city. If I were you, I would keep that connection in your back pocket. <clears throat> Kaylock's gang is nearby. They must not follow me back to my shop. We'll take care of it. Yeah. You might be able to use this. Oh, God, I hope so. My carriage is nearby. Make use of it to tow them off my trail. I will meet you at the curio shop. Did you give them the slip? We gave them more than that. <laughs> Who are all these people? Over the years, I have established a number of connections across the city. Splendid. We'll need focused aid. Focused aid? <sighs> we take over Starek's gangs. We cripple his control. You're not aiming high enough. Starrick has influence in every branch of society. We need to match him. I see what you're saying, Evie. We need the Rooks. You are not starting a gang called the Rooks. I believe I may have an idea of my own. We will need the police to turn a blind eye to our activities. My ally in the force, Sergeant Aberline. I've heard he's a master of disguise. Next up, urchins. 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 Children make for excellent spies. Clara O'Day. Smart as a whip, that one. Finally, you would be wise to remember that Starrick never acts alone. There are gang leaders in every borough. You'll meet them soon enough, no doubt. Rexford Gaylock. Known for his ability to vanish before your very eyes. Should we make him vanish for real? I suppose. One moment. Um, a Templar target you might want to look into. Be cautious. It's rough out there. No, don't worry about me, Greeny. I can handle a few thugs. 
It appears to be broken. Oh well. At least we have a train now. It's not all bad. of the blighters you now have the chance to join our ranks we welcome all who would stand up to steric and his cutthroats and run Bertha another mile for that dirty ball bag. Kaylock? <laughs> He's left the station. Mel! Hello, fancy pants. And who might you I'm Evie be? Fry, and this is my brother, Jacob Fry. Pleased to meet you. I'm Agnes McBean. A delight. I thought I was getting a promotion. I suppose I'm out of work now. Come work for us instead. <laughs> I ain't bail your heat. You pay better than scraps? Oh, I'm sure we can at least match that. Then may I present to you Agnes and Bertha, lady and locomotive, at your service. I'll be in the next car. A hideout on the rails? What an excellent idea. Yes, it all worked out rather well. Now, I would like to follow up a lead on... Jacob? Is this serious? I'm not doing anything until this gets fixed. I believe I know someone who can help with that. I knew you would, Greeny. Oh, blast them. Alec, whatever is the matter? I have been intercepting nothing but poppycock propaganda about soothing syrup and whatnot. No, I swear to high heavens, if Staric's monopoly continues... Alec, I beg your pardon. These are friends of mine, Evie Fry and her brother, Jacob. Oh, um, Alexander Graham Bell. Linguist, inventor, and technical expert. Alec, I have something of a favor to ask you. Can you fix this? Oh, it looks like the casing is cracked. Oh, comes apart. I see. Could have used one of these to fit my fuses on top of Big Ben. Alec is installing a new telegraph line for our Free Press Association. To combat the Static Telegraph Company. Now, if I can mend the fuses connecting independent lines from Big Ben, Static will be weakened. Only, we are somewhat at a handicap. And, there. Oh, I've removed the mechanism, so it may work with your bracer. I'll put it to use immediately. <laughs> Jacob, wait. Mr. Bell, allow me to help you with your fuses. Oh, you will not find me too proud to accept Miss Fry. Oh, uh, we can use my carriage if you'd be so good as to hold the reins, though. I'll take that. Um, I, I can help you. Thank you very much, Miss Fry. I will now be able to continue with the installation of the new line. If there's anything else I can do to help... Uh, certainly. Please do come and visit. Oh, uh, I was toying with this device and have noted down the formula for you. It, it's not perfect yet, but by golly, it works. This soothing syrup has become the only medicine available in Lambeth. It bears the Templar Grandmaster's name. About time for a visit to the doctor. I don't see that cure arriving any time soon. And what exactly will you be doing, might I ask? You know very well. Tracking down the Peace of Eden. Enjoy your studies. I'll be out killing Templars. Ah. Another exciting night home for Evie Fry. Just on my way out, actually. I found the Peace of Eden. 
What's this one going to do, hmm? Heal the sick, deflect bullets, control the populace. They're dangerous objects, Jacob, especially in Templar hands. Oh, you sound exactly like father. If only. Lucy Thorne is expecting a shipment tonight. She's Starek's expert in the occult. I'm nearly certain she is receiving the piece of Eden Sir David Brewster mentioned. Sounds like fun. Mind if I join you? Promise you will stick to the mission. I swear. The contents of that box are worth more than your life and those of your entire family. Do you understand? Yes, Miss Thorne. Uh, careful there! And double the guard on that cart! Now, Miss Thorne, there's the matter of some uh, papers for Mr. Starrick. If you'll just come this way. Very well, but make it quick. Whatever it is she's after, it's in that chest. There are gunmen on the rooftops. Can you dispose of them before I reach the cart? I was hoping for a challenge. Did you find it? Actually... There he is! I think it's best we leave. What did you do? It's hardly the time for questions! Whoa! Come on! <laughs> well, that was fun. Thanks for the invitation. Let's do it again. Damn it. You may have not found a piece of Eden, but this material is invaluable. Look. It says the London assassins had found a shroud. The shroud of Eden is supposed to heal even the gravest injury. If the assassins had found something like this, surely father would have known. There must be something we're missing. Something only we can see. These look like directions. Are you coming? Field work is not really my speciality. We found a clue to a precursor object. Don't you want to follow it? Put that way, one can hardly refuse. I'll be in the study. I don't want to be interrupted unless you have news of the lost notebook. That makes getting in a challenge. You still intend to enter? If this is a Templar stronghold, it won't get any easier. Don't worry. We'll stay well away from Miss Lucy. Shall we? What are we looking for? I'm not quite sure. Not enormously subtle, is it? Clearly, Kenway had a strong sense of spectacle. The history of the London Assassins. Vault holes, vaults, a hidden key. This is it. You say you heard music. There was no opening there before. It's closing! Yes, I can see that. Help me block it. We need to find another way out. Sharp eye out, lads. Someone's targeting our network. The distillery might be next. You should not go about frightening respectable gentlemen, young man. I didn't realize snooping around was considered gentlemanly. Snooping? Sir, I assure you. Keep vigilant. Quick. That was too close a call. <laughs> well done, dear boy. Well done. Charles Darwin, delighted to make your acquaintance. Jacob Fry, the pleasure's all mine. <laughs> While you were busy wreaking havoc, I found this. 
It indicates that a sample of every batch has been sent to Lambeth Asylum. Oh, I wonder if it's visiting hours. Don't be so hasty, Mr. Fry. Many people work at Lambeth. You wouldn't want to attract unwanted attention. Hmm. And what's the fun in that? Not every problem can be solved by blowing things sky high. Sometimes a little discretion is in order. It's getting late. I will meet you at the asylum to continue our investigation. I have told you before, sir, I had nothing to do with that anonymous article. Nothing, I said. That is a lie, sir. And you know it. Bah, I don't have time for this nonsense. Nonsense? It is my name and reputation you have willfully besmirched, sir. My very name. Bah! <laughs> drive, damn you, drive. <laughs> that is Richard Owen. A vile, despicable wretch of a man. Really? I could have sworn you were close friends. Mr. Owen works at the asylum. He will know who made the syrup. Get him! Get him! Mr. Fry, I trust that you had a productive meeting with Mr. Owen. Oh, yes. We had the most wonderful chat. I found out the man behind Starrick's soothing syrup is John Elliotson. Dr. Elliotson. I haven't heard that name in a long while. He was a brilliant heart specialist until he became obsessed with phrenology and mesmerism. It ruined his career. Well, how shall we proceed? Oh, with all respect, Mr. Darwin, I believe I should proceed alone. After all, we wouldn't want to attract any unwanted attention. Sounds very wise. Good luck, my boy. Oh, and uh, Mr. Fry, should you find yourself with any free time, please do call on me. As you've just witnessed, the application of too much pressure can sometimes result in unexpected outcomes. Unfortunately, it appears I've ruined the organ. Send up a cadaver. At once, Dr. Elitson. I don't care about your ethics, and I care even less about your damn patience. Now hand over your keys. What are you doing? Haven't you heard? You're fired. Now bugger off. Last it ends. Yet I can only think of beginnings. A better tomorrow. Forged with the blood of visionaries. All I see is the blood of a lunatic. <laughs> Do you truly believe murdering an old man will stop humanity's great architect? Crawford Starrick has a glorious design for mankind. Designs are meant to be broken. I are a child. A child who believes he can solve all the world's woes with a flick of a blade. Have you ever pondered the consequences of your actions, Jacob Fry? Or did your father teach you nothing? has ceased outrageous fry intends to endanger all of london at the hands of the mob or perhaps he doesn't intend much of anything at all Thank he's you. simply content to dice with our lives the asylum is shut up medical care throughout the city is in disarray he does not cannot understand the consequences of his actions the man is clearly an anarchist gentlemen 
This tea was brought to me from India by a ship then up from the harbor to a factory where it was packaged and ferried by carriage to my door unpacked in the larder and brought upstairs to me all by men and women who work for me who are indebted to me Crawford Starrick for their jobs the time the very lives they lead they will work in my factories and so too shall their children and you come to me with talk of this Jacob Fry this insignificant blemish who calls himself assassin you disrespect the very city that works day and night so that we may drink this this miracle this tea I'm nearing the end of my research. Our beloved London shall not suffer such a bothersome fool for much longer. And what of this sister I've heard of? Miss Fry. Miss Fry shall be gutted. Soon enough. Delicious. Sorry to interrupt in a shit. Thought you'd like to know that Sean and Rebecca got away from Odsoberg. Berg runs a unit called Sigma Team. Violet DaCosta is his tech support. They've been hunting and killing assassins for a long time. Thank God you're all right. Oh, tish tosh. It'll take more than a Templar super soldier to end the glorious saga of Sean Danger Hastings. I was talking to Rebecca. Right. Anyway, Berg's presence confirms it. The Peace of Eden is in London. The Initiate's data sync suggests it's the Shroud. The Templars seem to want it pretty bad all of a sudden. They must know something we don't. The only thing we know is that we can't go up against Sigma Team alone. Leave that to me. In the meantime, keep a low profile. Let the Initiate continue to sync the data. Miss Attaway. Yes, may I... Oh. Splendid. You're here to murder me. I what? No matter. Everyone has a prize. Is this enough? I'm not here to kill you. Then what's your game? Mr. Starrick and the Milner Company have blocked your ambitions long enough. I have a business proposition for you. Wonderful. Come with me. We have much to discuss, Mr. Jacob Fry. At your service. Truer words were never spoken. Malcolm Milner. Starrick's puppet himself. Careful, you twats! This park scene needs to make it to the outway depot. He thinks he can burn my buses. Let's give him a taste of his own medicine. Let's give him the whole damn bottle. <laughs> We'll turn Milner's park scene against him. But I'll need help from my gang. Such entrepreneurial instinct, Mr. Fry. I shall leave you to it. How's that for a taste? I can see Milner's stock price plummeting already. You're hired. Oh, I have more business planned for us both. Drop a note to my secretary to make an appointment, and I shall review the next step in our scheme. I don't actually work. Like that. Mr. Fry. I told you to make an appointment. My schedule was open. You're fortunate I like you. Internal combustion engines. Eight small syllables that mean a great deal of money. The engines will be delivered to Milner by train. Secure them for me, and he will be devastated. Hmm. I'll need a second train to pull this off. And I think I know just the man. So we have a deal, Mr. Fry? You're fortunate I like you, Miss Attaway. <laughs> 
So, what do you want, Fry? What makes you so sure I want something? Perhaps I saved you out of the kindness of my own heart. <laughs> Come on, let me tell you about the job. The internal combustion engine. The end of horse-drawn transport. <laughs> It's like gazing into the future. And what is the going rate for the future, do you think? Uh, we're not selling them. You're giving them to your contact? You'd be paid all the same. Who is this Pearl, anyway? How long have you been working with her? She's a business partner. That's all you need to know. Jacob Darling. Do join me. To our fruitful partnership. And to the shiny new engines now in my possession. Back to business. Milne has fled to the Thames, occupied with securing his ferry. It's all he has left. Hmm, protecting it with his life, no doubt. The very thing I want you to take. <laughs> Just kill him. That's not your first glass of champagne, is it? Success is more intoxicating than alcohol, Mr. Fry. Then save a glass for me. I knew this day would come. Mr. Starrett was furious I lost the engines. So this is my comeuppance. Pearl Attaway led me to you, not Staric. And they were gonna give her again. I should never have come between Mr. Staric and Miss Attaway. Family always stay together in the end. What do you mean, their family? Lower too much, cousin. You will get your engines back. Our new motorized buses will bring us both a lot of money. I'll need to arrange proper transport for the engines to get back to my factory. I want you at Waterloo personally to ensure that nothing goes wrong. Of course. May the Father of Understanding guide us. Today and in all of our future endeavors, cousin. Waterloo Station. Ladies and gentlemen, I apologize for the delay. We will get you into the Central Station very soon. Where the hell is that schedule? Central Station's closed. Attaway's orders. You saw these blueprints, did you not? Were you aware of this flaw? It's all a man and maybe, sir. What a shame. Good partnerships are hard to come by. Ours is most certainly dissolved. It's business, Mr. Fry. One does what one must to come out on top. Crawford will not take the news of my death lightly. He can be unpleasant when he's cross. I have sacrificed so much. I don't want to lose my buses. When coldness or deceit shall slight the beauty now they prize, 
And deem it but a faded light Which beams within your eyes When hollow hearts must wear a mask Mr. Sterrick! Told you not to disturb me! To break your own to see In such a moment I but ask That you remember me That you remember me Crawford A luster stripped by the hands of that savage. He must be brought to justice. Pearl would not want justice. Pearl would want vengeance. Your passion is most welcome, Miss Thorne. But we cannot let our emotions disrupt the lawful structures of society. If we do that, the enemy wins. It shall happen in the shadows. Miss Fry will hang from the gallows, and I will flay her brother as he comes to save her. I suppose it must be done. Take no chances. Increase the Templar presence in London. We alone protect this city of light. Yes, Crawford. And then we shall enter the vault and cast aside the shadows together. Members of Parliament and others. So the hints you found in the Kenway House lead to the monument. What a wonderful use of your time following me around asking obvious questions. Well, since Henry isn't here, I thought you might enjoy the company. I don't require any company. And Mr. Green is following up on some leads of his own. Oh, yes, Mr. Green. That's a fascinating idea. Oh, please, Mr. Green, come and take a look at this book and stand oh so close to me, Mr. Green. I do not. Too many today live in what our oh, perhaps you have nothing better to do, but I'm busy protecting the assassins. Are you really? What was it Father used to say? Don't allow personal feelings to compromise the mission. Precisely. Anyway, I'm off. If I find any more wild geese for you to chase, I'll be in touch. Be ever more pleasant for your absence. Good day, Miss Fry. I'll take that. You will try to cement your own power. But what if you cannot control it? And why do you want the shroud? Merely to keep the Templars from having it. How like an assassin. To hold the power of eternal life, and yet be too afraid to use it. Eternal life? Is that what you think the Shroud offers? What I think is no longer your concern. <laughs> 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 With me, I have other plans. <laughs> Damn it. Hmm. What good is a key if you don't know what lock it opens? I dare say Miss Thorne is in the same predicament. Henry, Mr. Green, here, this is it. This matches a casket owned by the Queen, kept in. The Tower of London. It's a fortress. I don't suppose you have any friends there? A guardsman? If you can find him once you're inside. I'll talk to you again when I have the shroud. Thank you for your help. Right, yes. Good luck. Evie? <laughs> so, you have murdered me after all.
But what good will that do you? The Shroud isn't here. You sought a tool of healing in order to extend your own power. Not mine. Ours. You are so short-sighted. You'd hoard power and never use it, when we would better the condition of humanity. I hope you never find the Shroud. You have no idea what it truly can do. Tell me then. No. Take this down. Then I want it sealed until you receive further orders. Miss Thorne. You supplied me with the means to secure London's future. The city thanks you. The order thanks you. I thank you. But the shroud can only be worn by one. Therefore, I hereby dissolve this partnership. I promise to endow you with an income into your old age. That is the most I can do. Let the father of understanding guide you. Yes, what is it? Miss Thorne, sir. What of her? I'm sorry, sir. She is dead. And the key? Where is the key? There was no key found on her body, sir. The shroud will be mine, even if I have to raise hellfire to do it. Burn the letter. The bank is designed to protect England's gold reserves. A fortress, guarded under lock and key. There is the bank manager, Mr. Osborne. Only he is allowed free access to the vault. You can spot him near the entrance. And, oh yes, one man keeps a close watch on the vault door. He watches it like a hawk. If he sees you, he's sure to seal it. The guard captain, Gus Howard, knows Tupiny well. He is in on this, I'm certain. Mr. Fry, please use discretion. The only way to implicate Tupiny is to catch him in the act. Do not jeopardize him. No big displays. This is the Bank of England. If you encounter any trouble, I'll be in the atrium in disguise. Tupini won't be leaving that vault. You've stolen your last shilling from the people of London. Those animals squandered their savings. We are the experts in investment. Nothing would be built or improved. Nothing would rise above the muck without our hand guiding. No creating the future. They benefit as much as they're worth. It is their city, not yours. Without our investments, there would be no city. For the path of the dead. Murder! Murder! Thank goodness the police were saved. Arrest them all for oh. robbing the people oh. of England. The Bank of England is closed until further notice.
The currency, a laughing stock. Inflation out of control, Tupany brutally murdered. And yet Parliament does nothing. The bill will be defeated, sir. That buffoon Israeli shall be taken care of. It has been arranged, upon my honor. Your honor carries little weight. How dare you, sir! The poor people of this city have suffered enough. Today I granted a significant rise to my staff in order to counter inflation. What? I would supply all of London if I could. Meanwhile, you sit in your club and wax poetic with promises your honor cannot pay. Your family's fortune, however. I wonder what they would offer to keep your record out of the newspapers. About the same as Disraeli would offer for your balls, I wager. But let's be generous. Why limit ourselves to one or the other? And we can have it all. What say you, sir? <laughs> Shall I come collect? No more dallying. The halls of Parliament must be free to govern. Again. Understood? You may see yourself out. Dear Mr. Starrick, men hired, strike tomorrow. Disraeli's death will stall Corrupt Practices Act indefinitely. Gladstone will be far more pliable. May the father, etc., etc., be. So Starrick's got his finger in politics, has he? I need to enter the Sinopian Club and find out who B is. Tread delicately around Parliament. As if I don't usually. Your indiscretion at the Bank of England caused British currency to nearly collapse. Nearly is the operative word. Speaking of collapses, what of the key you found that unlocks very little? Henry took it for research. I am confident that the vault is ours. Nearly ours, Evie. Nearly. All right, B. Who are you and what's your game? I presume. Pleasure to meet you. B. B! My name's Herbert! And why are you following the Prime Minister? It's just the job, sir! Some old bloke paid me to. Well, I was born in Crawley, but that's by the by. Who are you working for? Oh, uh, I never got his name. Uh, old chap, big moustache, wore some kind of uniform. Who's ours, maybe? What's his game? Please, you'll kill me. And a three-story drop will shatter your legs and send you to the workhouse. Difference is, you can run from him. Tomorrow! Oh, my lights are going to attack the Prime Minister's carriage on the way to Parliament. Oh, oh, oh. Perfect. So much for the house call. I have to find a way into that carriage. What's the meaning of this? Who the devil are you? Prime Minister, I'm your new bodyguard, Jacob Fry. I wasn't informed of any new bodyguard. Who's your commanding officer? Let the boy speak, Dizzy. <laughs> Madam, apologies. But we've learned of a threat on your life. And the Met thought it best to move quickly. Threat? What sort of threat? <gasps> that sort. Damn Gladstone! That bloody man! He will pay for this! Thank you. What do you intend to do about Gladstone, young man? I assure you, madam, Gladstone is innocent in this. But he tried to kill my husband. Well, we'll look into Gladstone. Perhaps you can help me with another inquiry, madam. A gentleman with ties to Parliament, older, wears cavalry uniforms and has a large moustache. 
You seem like a rough and ready sort of fellow, Mr. Fry. Well, yes, I am, actually. And are you familiar with the poorer districts of our city? Roughly. Wonderful. As it happens, I've been eager to tour the Devil's Acre. If you were to escort me, I'd be happy to assist you in your inquiry. That strikes me as a dangerous idea. Then it's settled. Come back here to Downing Street tomorrow night, eight o'clock sharp. Good day, Mr. Fry. But I... Good day, Mr. Fry! Madam? Mr. Fry? Ready to take the air? Devil's Acre should just be coming alive. I'm afraid I must cancel our engagement. The lawn is crawling with scandal-hunting journalists, and I simply cannot be seen in the company of someone so... I'll see them off. You follow along when it's clear. Yes, yes. Uh, be gentle, won't you? The press are notoriously touchy about any violence to their person. <laughs> I'll barely ruffle a hair on their heads. Shh, Desmond. So this is a pint, is it? Huh? <laughs> Remarkable. <sighs> nice doggy. Mm. <laughs> Good boy, Desmond. Hand over the mutt. You'll change your tune when me and my friends find you. Now then, Desmond, to get you back to your mistress, whom I've just left entirely unattended in one of London's most dangerous pubs. Well, if you never told your father how you felt about him, how was he supposed to know? I never thought of it that way. I suppose deep down we all just want to be loved. Just so. Hmm. Here, have a sweetie. Oh, Desmond, and Mr. Fry, I'd like you to meet... Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. John the Tosser. Charmed. I think we'd better get you home. Right you are, Mr. Fry. Come along, Desmond. Your stop, madam. My stop? <laughs> How delightful. Thank you. Thank you for a splendid evening, Mr. Fry. I shall be sure to speak highly of you to Dizzy. <laughs> oh, yes. What's this nonsense about needing a password to see Lord Cardigan today? Relax. I've got it in my pocket. Look sharp, men. Allow no one past unless I authorize them. Cardigan has gone too far this time. I've a mind to contact Scotland Yard myself. Come now, gentlemen. I thought us united in opposition against this perfidious law. Password. Balaclava. Come in. Now then, <clears throat> let's discuss this like... Good God! Who the bloody hell... Oh, shut up. Balaclava should fall not on the gloried fields of Crimea, but to an assassin's blade in the very halls of power. Are you finished yet? Take your bow, knave, for you have managed what no Russian battery, what no Indian tiger could achieve. Claim your trophy 
And may you choke on it! Yes, but do tell me more about Balaclava. Farewell! Farewell, dear Britannia! Your dawn shall be dimmer that the Earl of Cardigan sees it not. God save the Queen! And the Eleventh Hussars! What a prick. Order has bred disorder. The sea rises to flood the pubs and extinguish the street lamps. Our city will die. Tupinay has failed. Lucy has failed. Brudenell, Elliotson. Pearl. All have gone into the night. It is up to me now. The assassins have brought nature's fury into our homes. Men have become monsters. Barreling toward us, teeth out. Our civilization must survive this onslaught. To prevent a return of the Dark Ages, I will start anew. London must be reborn. You're late. Staric is making his move. The piece of Eden is somewhere inside Buckingham Palace. Let him have it. I've seen your handiwork across the city. Perhaps you should trust my judgment. I've been killing Staric's henchmen. What have you been doing? Let's ask Henry, shall we? I have been repairing your mistakes. Too much haste is too little speed. Don't you quote father at me. That's Plato. And I am sorry, this doesn't involve anything you can destroy. Father was right, he never approved of your methods. Father is dead! Enough! I have just received word from my spies. At the palace ball tonight, Staric plans to steal the piece of Eden, and then eliminate all the heads of church and state. Once more, for old time's sake. And then we're finished. Agreed. So what's the plan? Such an unexpected delight to visit you both. What is the news on the street? Mrs. Disraeli, we have discovered that there is something inside Buckingham Palace that could threaten the... <laughs> what my sister's failing to say is that we require entrance into the ball tonight. <laughs> Impossible! Even if there were any invitation cards remaining, which there are not, uh, someone of your lowly station... If that damn fool Gladstone is attending this evening, they can have my card. Perfect. Then I'll go alone. Mrs. Disraeli, if you'd be kind enough to inform my darling brother of the location of the Gladstone's residence, perhaps he could use his considerable skills to commandeer their cards. <laughs> what fun! Did you hear that, Dizzy? We're going to pinch the Gladstone's invitations. Thank you for volunteering me, sweet sister. Oh, a pleasure, brother dearest. Now, Mrs. Disraeli, if you would excuse me, I must visit with the Maharaja. It occurs to me that he may have a second set of plans to a certain vault. Quite a carriage you got there. Where did you buy it, if, if you don't mind me asking? Ask all you want, Freddy. You'll never get an answer. Damn it all. Was it my eyebrows? Yes. And your face, voice, and body. Look, I've got an invitation to the Queen's Ball tonight. How did you come by that? Freddy, there's to be an attack on the ball. I need to smuggle some weapons inside to prevent it. Supposing I believe you. Only the Royal Guard carries weapons. So? 
too easy. For God's sake, Freddy. Fine. I require a guard's uniform. Done. I knew you'd come through. Just promise me, Jacob, that you will return Mr. Gladstone's coach. Of course. One uniform as requested. It's still warm. My gift to you? I will meet you on the roof of Buckingham Palace. You're such a romantic. Delighted to see you again, Miss Fry. Your Highness, the plans detailing the renovations to Buckingham Palace have gone astray. I suppose you will have to make do with the copies. There are copies? Where? Uh, not so fast. First, I have a matter of some urgency. Carrying out my plan would require stealth and speed, qualities I know you possess. Time is of the essence, Your Highness. Then make this quick, my dear. The most influential men in Parliament remain beyond my reach. But these very men have sent for carriages to prepare for the ball tonight. Acquire an official carriage, and we shall drive the politicians to their destinations. Along the way, I will meet with them. And afterward, I shall tell you where to find the plans. You're a shrewd negotiator. One must be when one is so often underestimated. Thank you, Miss Fry, for forwarding my cause. Oh, you are welcome. I hope some good comes of it, despite Mr. Gladstone's vitriol. Those of us with the largest hearts protect them the most. Your father, for instance. From what I understand, he was extraordinarily sad. Broken, even, after your mother's passing. That kind of pain can blind us. Cause us to say outlandish things to protect the ones we love. It's time you returned this carriage and recovered those plans. They are located in Buckingham Palace. The Queen keeps them among her personal papers in the white drawing room. I wish you a good evening, Miss Evie Fry. And to you, Your Highness. Of course he'd arrive in that. Miss Fry? Hand him your weapons. We must enter an armed. Did I hear something? No, just the voices in your own head. And yet, they are so much more pleasant than yours. Charming. Aren't I? Your Majesty, may I present Miss Evie Fry? You are the one responsible for Mr. Gladstone's mishap. Your Majesty, I apologize. I... The cake is particularly good. Enjoy the ball. I really must be going. Miss Fry, may I have this dance? Mr. Starrick, you've had your fun, but the game is over. Must lead with one right foot. Oh, my! Everything all right, my dear? Do you require assistance? I never liked balls. <laughs> Here, the location of the vault. Go! Just like that? No plan? Time for plans. I'll catch up as soon as I'm rid of this infernal contraption. No, no. What? What are you doing? Exploiting. I warned you, my boy. But you 
Do not listen. Zarek! Your reign is nearly over! It has barely begun. Jacob! London will perish without me. You flatter yourself. I would have created a paradise. The city belongs to the people. You are but one man. I am at the very top of the order. You were, Mr. Starrick. <laughs> you were. Shame we won't be partners anymore. It's for the best, isn't it? Are you gonna wear the shroud and run London? Whatever it gives, it takes from someone else. You'd continue to age without me. You'd become like father. A fate worse than death. Will you wear it? After you sorted out the boroughs, the chaos I caused, I couldn't compete. Jacob Fry stepping back. Who's blackmailing you? Is it George? He wouldn't dare. I've missed you. Me too. Would it be possible to continue where we left off? I'd love nothing more. I'm starting to think Father didn't know everything about everything. <laughs> Henry. It's a big world out there. With London in the center. Perhaps not the very center. I came as soon as I could. Do not worry. I'll... I'll head back to the train. Did I... Did I jeopardize the mission? Henry, you saved it. I think you belong in the field. With me. A carriage. Nicely done, Freddy. Mr. Abeline, please. Your Majesty. Miss Fry. You've met before? Did I never mention? Mr. Abeline informs me that you three are responsible for saving my life. Is this true? It is, Your Majesty. Evie Fry, step forward. And you? My brother, ma'am. Jacob Fry. And this is Mr. Henry Green. Mr. Fry? Mr. Green? Neil? Invest you all in the Order of the Sacred Garter. Thank you, Your Majesty. If you are as adept as Mr. Abeline implies, I may call on you. Sergeant Abeline tends to exaggerate, Your Majesty. We shall meet again. And Miss Fry? Ma'am? Should you want it? I saved you some cake. <laughs>
Father would be proud of you. <laughs> Dame Evie Fry. <laughs> Sir Jacob Fry. <laughs> Race you to the train. You're on. That's it. It's under the palace. Time to go. Let's get the shroud to Dr. Grammatica immediately. Sigma team beat us here. We're too late. What do we do? Killing really is the least productive way to achieve our goals. Kill them all. Leave them on the ground. Contact! Cover me! That skinny piece of shit tried to murder me, Berg. I want them him to that bleed. Whispered dreams that only poisoned us, them that told us lies of their bravery, them that preached on progress and put us in the poorhouse. Them done the horrid murder on bloody stages that loudly crowed their humility, lords and dames and sons in chapels on a summer. All quiet now, their mouths are stopped up. Hold still, goddammit! The mission matters! Understood! Those who fought Sean! for something better Those who fought by how they live Loved ones taken long before this world Galena, we need an exit! Targets are righteous. We need to go now. Understood. Shroud. Forget the bloody shroud. Stay with me, Bex. Please. We go. Good work in there, Initiate. In time, we will recover the Shroud. And hey, we pulled a feed from our bug in Isabel's computer before they shut us out. Playing it now. Sorry about the mess. <laughs> so, how's the Shroud gonna help you create a new clone? It's not... And the shroud is wrapped around the body. It scans it for damage and then reconstructs it on a cellular level. You're not making a clone. You're gonna recreate a precursor from scratch. Bingo! The Phoenix Project timetable just got accelerated big time. I'm going to call Alan Rick and deliver the good news. <laughs> it's like Christmas! <laughs> Hello? It's me? Brought the shroud as you asked, but... I'm scared. Do not fear me. You've done well. I'm not scared of you. I'm scared for you. Anyone finds out what you've been doing. You have played your part, my instrument. I will save you. I will save you all. 